Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we are specifically going to talk about Call to Netherdeep, the rival adventure crew, and specifically we're going to talk about Dermot Werder. Uh, he is one of the members of the rival adventuring crew, and uh, that is run by I.O. Jabe. And he is a really incredibly well-crafted non-player character. Um, and so let's talk about him today. He's great. All right, so Dermot Werder. Uh, he is a goblin cleric who gains his power. His deity is the Luxon. The Luxon is it is the official deity of... Um, the Luxon is the official deity of the Kryn Dynasty which is in Zorhas. And Zorhas is a specific region within wild the within the continent of Wildmount. And all of this is in Exandria, Dungeons and Dragons world, uh, critical role world. There's a debate on which it's which it is or if it's both or if it's neither. Uh, but Exandria is um, so it's Exandria is the world. Um, Wildmount is the continent Zorhas is the um, is the region, right? And a re I actually think you could say realm. And then um, and then the Kryn dynasty are the rulers there, and their official deity is the Luxon. Now, what is the Luxon? The Luxon is a magic item that's shaped exactly like a D twenty, right? Look at the look at the symbol for the Luxon that's actually on the bust picture of Dermot Werder, and you'll see a D20. You'll see he's wearing a chain with a, a gigantic D20 symbol on his, on himself, right? Now, let, let's talk about the Luxon for a minute. This is fascinating. I actually really support this. I think it's a great idea. This all came from Matthew Mercer. It's a brilliant idea. So there's this problem sitting in the middle of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, which is deities, right? Like, we are in a faithless world, right? I, I, I'm an evangelical Christian. I have faith. Y'alls are beating us. The nuns, the N-O-N-E, no God. You guys way, way outnumber us in in um, uh, in numbers. And you own this world. You own this world, right? Like, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. The, you know, the faithful um, are way behind the faithless. You, you guys are really crushing us when it comes to, um, to, like, prominence and effectiveness in this world, right? So it's definitely a it's definitely a thing, and um, and so basically, so D and D has this really problematic structure where Dungeons and Dragons is kind of like, well, what do we, what do we do this? We have a bunch of people who have no faith, and we're showing them a world where faith is very very specifically important and powerful, right? And unlike and in I'm an evangelical Christian, and I say that God is real, right? But I do not expect you to say, oh, yeah, Scott said God is real. I believe that on faith, right? I can't prove that to you. But in Dungeons and Dragons, deities are, like, quite literally real, and their power is uncontested, right? It's not, a, it's not like you can't be like, well, oh, prove it to me, right? Like, you're like, it's right there. Like, you know, like, you, that person just got healed by the power of a deity. You see it every day if you're an adventurer, right? Like, this is a debatable subject, right? So... Werder, uh, he he worships the Luxon, right? So Matthew Mercer has really kind of fixed a problem in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and he's saying, okay, we don't want to get rid of deities, right? Because we need clerics. They're a, they are a load-bearing wall, right? That You can't just pull them out. If you pull out clerics, you may not have Dungeons & Dragons anymore. And I think Mercer, Mercer is really smart. And so he's like, well, we can't just pull out deities, but what will we make the deity, right? And so he's saying, let's make the deity the D20. Literally the most powerful tool that any player has is the D20, right? And, you know, it's arguably the only thing that's more powerful is their pencil, is their pencil and maybe their paper, you know? But actually, I think the D20 is, is incredibly powerful, if not the most powerful tool players have in Dungeons & Dragons, which is the D20. So Mercer has said... The god in in Exandria, the main god, right in Exandria, is this is the D twenty, and he's called it the Luxon, which is a great word for it, right? Um, and but it's the D twenty. Now, why is this a good deity? Well, one, it makes people who are very uncomfortable with deities in the real world, uh, ha, you know, say, oh, okay, well, I understand what the D twenty is. The D twenty is fate, right? Because you roll and it determines your fate, 
right? Like that's it. And so from a God perspective, it's a really good object to consider for a, for a God, a deity. Actually, a deity is a much better word. You really shouldn't be calling an object a God, but deity is a way that you understand the word God, but it's better, right? For, for shifting it slightly to the side, right? So basically this deity is the D20. And so this is a great idea. Now, why is this a great idea? Why wouldn't I, uh, Scott Garibay, want my God to be in Dungeons and Dragons? Well, Dungeons and Dragons isn't a, isn't a, an evangelical Christian product. It's a lost person product, right? That I enjoy, right? And so, and that's why it's the fourth most important thing in my life, Dungeons and Dragons, right? God, uh, you know, my entire life is, you know, uh, Christian husband, father, right? Like those are, those are most three most important things in my life. D and D is fourth, right? God's first on the list, right? My wife is second and my kids are third, right? And so, and so D and D only makes it to the fourth on the list, right? So, and the reason why I, I don't want the evangelical Christian God to be actually, it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is really fascinating. Um, Gygax put deities of every culture into, uh, into like a virtually every single culture into the deities and demigods book, but not Jesus. <laughs> like, and, and, I, and I think there's a reason for that, right? And he was right to exclude him because he's a real god, right? Like that's the that's the 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 delineator, right? And so, um, so I really think it, you know, and there, so my point is, like. It's not fair for me as an evangelical Christian to come to D&D and say you need to represent everything that's me, right? Because this wasn't created as a Christian object, right? And so I do want there to be deities to remain in the game so that the load-bearing wall that's needed remains, right? And so Dermot Werder, is a, he is a, a follower, a praiser, a worshiper of the Luxon, right? And he... And, and so let's talk about Dermot Werder a bit more. So one... What is he here for, right? I love this aspect, right? And because it really explains what a cleric usually is, right? So basically, Dermot Werder, he's a goblin cleric who worships the Luxon, okay? He's an old, old friend of Io Jabe, the leader of the rival adventuring crew in, in Call to Netherdeep, right? The leader. And him and Io are old, old friends. Like, you get the idea that they've been friends for like 10 years. They're so long, they don't even remember, right? when they first met, but they, like, and so Dermot Werder, he is the Scooby, he is the Shaggy to the Scooby, right, so think of Io Jabe as the Scooby, and if you don't know who the leader is between Scooby and Shaggy, I'm going to tell you right now, it's definitely Scooby, right, basically, he's more courageous, more intelligent, and more charismatic than Shaggy, Shaggy just kind of long for the ride, right, and so basically, Dermot Werder, He's not there for adventuring. He's not there for anything except his friend IOJ, right? And he only became a cleric literally when she said, I want to make an adventuring group, right? Which I love. So his dedication is to someone in the player group, right? Which I think this is a really powerful... This definitely explains adventuring for some people. He don't care about adventuring. He don't care about gold. He don't really even care about the Luxon, right? He cares about IOJ, and he realizes the Luxon can give him power to make himself useful to IOJ. And not because he loves her, because she is his friend, right? And I love this depiction of friendship. I love this depiction of loyalty. And I also love this pers- this per- this depiction of dominant and subordinate, right? Like, basically, she is the dominant person in their relationship, and he is the subordinate. And it's not a romantic relationship. The other thing is, I think this happens in life. People are like, there is the Han Solo and the Chewbacca, right? Chewbacca was not the driving force in that relationship. That doesn't mean Chewbacca was, was invaluable. Right. And I thought that, I think that's really fascinating. And so basically, um, you know, Io Jabe, Han Solo, um, Dermot Werder, Chewbacca. It's just, you know, it's a dominant and subordinate relationship. And, it's it's beautifully crafted in 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 the Call to Netherdeep. Dermot Werder is a fantastic character. He's absolutely a model for building um, non-player characters going forward. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider like subscribing. Have a wonderful millennium.